This is your ultimate guide to 3D printing in 2024. I'm going to cover every single step really quickly. I'm also going to talk about my six go-to printers that I know have been reliable for years and they have current versions out there. Everything's going to be linked below. The first thing that you're going to want to do is choose the right 3D printer to start out with. There are several 3D printers that are reliable and everyone on the internet is telling you what to buy. I have no endorsements. I don't get paid. I have printers back here that are printing now, but I don't get paid. So I think I'm a pretty good neutral person to give you advice. I did extensive research and I chose six of my favorites that I've listed below. I use Prusas. I have three Prusas back here that are doing my skateboard lights and my fishing lures, but I also print little brackets for fishing carts and stuff. And I have printers in a little room, a closet that I redid that are really reliable. And unless they break, I'm going to keep them. Let's talk about the filament. The filament is something that I have right now and in, stored inside of this case. And I just did a video on keeping your filament dry. But that is the spaghetti like plastic, like weed whacking line that is actually what creates the actual 3D print. So it goes through an extruder, it melts it per layer and it creates your model. That filament be, can be really crappy, but you can also be dirty or wet. So it's important to keep that dry. I have all of my filaments that I've used listed below, and it's important to use really good filament and not use stuff that you're buying used online that's all dried out or wet or breaky. It can just be a mess. And actually, honestly, it's not safe. Um, one of my favorite places to start with filament, especially if you want a matte finish is just do PLA. It's just a basic, it's really strong. Don't worry about how long it's gonna last, but you just start with PLA. Then you can upgrade into uh, PETG and carbon fiber and get all types. There's even filament that has metal inside of it, but that's not where you start out with. So after you have your printer set up on a level surface and you even read the manual and you have your filament, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure everything runs. It usually comes with a test print on an SD card. Follow the instructions. I know that some people don't want to, but go ahead and run the sample model that comes on the SD card. Um, some printers come fully assembled. If you decide to do a kit, make sure you take your time to build it. But I wouldn't suggest buying a kit as your first printer. Okay. Now that you did the test print, the next thing you're gonna do is your first 3D model. And there are a ton of places to get models. There are free models that you can get that you can't really sell, but there's free models all over the place. Uh, Thingverse, printables.com, and then Mini Factory. Um, I've linked all of those down below. I even have a bunch of free models. You can also create your own 3D models, which is really the power, and that's used with Fusion 360, it's free, Tinkercad, Blender, or SketchUp. They allow you to create your own models and there's about a year learning curve, but you can get going right away by editing a current model. After you have your model, you're gonna wanna slice it. Slicing uses specialized software to convert your model into a file the printer can read. It slices it up into tiny little layers and it basically says, hey, print this layer, this layer, add this layer. The slicer software will allow you to change the model size, the layer height, the infill, the quality, whether or not you want something really fast just to look at it, or you want it to be really strong and sturdy. Hey, just one moment. If you found any value in this video, please consider hitting that the thumbs up thing and then subscribing just so other people can learn and they can get started because this hobby has brought me a lot of joy. Thank you. Now that your model is completely sliced, it's time to get it over and start printing. You usually save that onto an SD card. In a lot of cases, like the Bamboo printer and my new Prusa, their Wi-Fi has a connect utility and you connect directly to that, but that may not be your case. So you take your file and put it out, export it on the SD card. You slice it, put it on the SD card or Wi-Fi, and then you start to print. It's important that your filament, like I mentioned, is dry and your area is dry. You're going to want to monitor your first couple prints. And a lot of people would say you always monitor them. I keep a, I don't know where it is, but I keep a little fire detector near my printer at all times. But it's really important that the temperature, you don't have any fans 
on your print as it's printing. You really at this point want to have a very, very successful print because it is going to be amazing once you pull that first print off of that bed. And also make sure that you don't pull the print off the bed when it's hot. You can really damage the surface of the bed just like I did on this brand new Prusa right here. I went ahead and pulled something off when it was hot because I was in a hurry. So that is really what's important. You're gonna wanna also use some tools once your print is done like tweezers or the little cutters and clean up your model. Depending on your skill level, it could be stringy. You're gonna have to learn some stuff. It's gonna be a trial and error. Just cut yourself some slack. The more you print, the better you are going to get. Like these skateboard lights, uh, for instance, that I made. These skateboard lights are basically something that got me started with 3D printing. I was riding a boosted board and I was it was at night and I made I wanted people to see me more than I wanted to see where I was gonna go because I'm I'm about I fall all the time. So I printed a couple different cylinders. I figured, okay, why not put something that I call the bash guard in front? And th then when I put the bash guard in front, I printed cylinders that hold these Harbor Freight cheap little lights, and I was good to go. These this this little thing worked perfectly. Um, I share this in my file of my really inexpensive 3D printing for profit course, and I talk all about my story. But you can also just print for things you want, like game characters and all types of thing utility things around the house. Like I just did a video on 50 things to print for this year. I do a video every year on that. A dollar light selling these sold for thirty dollars. I do have a story about it, and that video is linked below. So now, once you get your model done, you wanna clean that model up. You can go ahead and paint your model. A lot of people don't understand that post-process of painting or assembling it. Like for instance, if you were to do a game character, most likely you would be painting it. You would prime it and then you would paint it. So just because you can 3D print doesn't mean you're gonna get the final result, but a lot of functional prints, you're gonna nail it. You won't have to print but I did print the, the skateboard lights because I wanted them to look a certain way. I went ahead and did a, the, my favorite paint, which is Fusion, and then I went ahead and uh, sanded it off to give that sort of Star Wars grunge look. So anyways, look at the six printers that I'm recommending in all of my filament links and comment below. I'd be happy to help you out and get you started with 3D printing because it is powerful. You can be the hero to your family and your friends to create things that have never been created before. And whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Consider joining my Facebook group. Uh, I'll support you, whatever you inspire you, whatever you need to do. I'm going to link that down below. It's just a maker group where we talk about 3D printing, CNC, and learning. Take care. Have an awesome day, guys.